So a little bit of background on this project. I built this control panel around two years ago, mainly because I watched a video posted by Eddie Sarik, where he built this kind of cool panel with arcade buttons and an iPad 2 keyboard emulator. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to check it out. So I built it and I used it for a while. It does work pretty well. But I wanted the e-stop reset button to flash when an e-stop condition was requested. I thought it would be nice to illuminate other main functions as well. So to make the very long story short, I started to look for a way to control the button LEDs with Mach 3. So I watched some videos about writing a macro as well as writing a brain. Writing a macro is more difficult because it's done with Visual Basic coding. However, PLC logic is very intuitive and easier to do. So using a brain was the way to go. I watched a video from CNC for XR7 where he explains in detail how to write with PLC logic. Link down on the description. Following his tutorial, I modified my brain to suit my needs. However, I ran into a small issue when it was time to integrate the eStop light to the software. So taking that in account, I felt the need to make this video. So if you find it useful, please share, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. So the bridge between the software and the hardware is obviously the parallel port breakout board. There are other ways, such as Modbus or Serial, but in this case, we'll use a parallel port. And to enable the actions in between, we use either a macro or a brain. As I've said, writing a macro is like having to run a computer with a command prompt. So instead, we'll use the graphical user interface, in this case, a brain, which Mach 3 includes a brain editor that uses logical operations and predetermined inputs and outputs or other functions within Mach 3. So when you see an LED turning on or flashing on your Mach 3 screen, so you ask yourself how to make a real LED to illuminate outside the program. And the answer is very simple, the same way you activate devices through outputs on the port. However, to control the behavior of those outputs, we use PLC, which stands for Programmable Logic Controls. With all of that said, on my control panel, the buttons I want illuminated are Cycle Start, Hit Hold, Feed Stop, Hit Stop Reset, Jog On, Jog Off, and the Feed Rate Override Reset. Starting with the Cycle Start, I want that LED to illuminate when the G code is running. Then, if I want to hold the feed, I want the LED to flash until either we resume or we stop the feed. Every time the feed stops, either by holding it or stopping it, I want the feed stop LED to illuminate for 2 seconds and then turn off. When there's a feed rate override condition, I want the feed rate override reset LED to flash until reset. On the jack on and off LED, I want it illuminated when jack is on and flashing when jack is off. Finally, the e stop reset button will flash when active, but the flashing part will be done with hardware outside the program for reasons that I will explain a little bit later. Ok, let's open Mac 3 mil. Now on the program, click on Operator, Brain Editor, and enter a name for your brain. I'm going to name mine Blinking Buttons. Good. Notice that we have only three commands. The add, represented by the plus sign. The remove, represented by the minus sign. And the terminate lobe, the upside down T symbol. So let's start with the first instruction or logic operation. Since we want the LED to turn on when the G code is running, first select add. A window will pop out, as you can see. We have to choose the kind of interaction that would be appropriate in this case. Think what happens when you click on the Cycle Start button on your screen. We are invoking an action to happen, so we want to turn an LED on when we activate the Run command. So click on LEDs. Now go to the Signal window. Scroll down to number 804, Run command. Click OK. As you can see, we have our first block with the Run instruction on it. That's all we want, to turn on when running. Now to terminate this instruction, if we go to terminate it, a window will pop out. The warning indicates that we have to add something else to the action. Click OK. Select again. Now click on the Add sign again. Now see the window. 
Now we can see some choices on the loop logic. We just want to pass the signal through, so it's a no operation, which is already selected. Click OK. Now we got a new block. Select it. Now we click on the terminator symbol. Now the window will give us the choices again. What do we want to do with the LED signal? We want to send it to an output, right? So I'll click on the outputs. Now come down to the scroll window and look for output number two. For the purposes of this video, you can select any output. I will select output number two. Click OK. And now we have created our first instruction, which is turn the green LED on while the machine is running a G code and make the output number two go high. Okay, good. Let's keep going. We're going to do the second button light now, the feed hold command. For this one, same thing. We want to turn an LED on. Click on add LEDs. Down to the list to 111, partial line holding. Select it, click OK. Now we have our second line block. Now on this signal, I wanted the LED to be blinking while activated. So we had to add a timer to do the flashing. Let's click on it, add, click on timer. On this window, we see the square wave of the timer. The selection A is a delay. B, how long we want it to stay on. And C, how long we want it to stay off in seconds or fractions of a second. We want to unselect a cumulative and single shot. On B, pulse time, I enter 0.33 seconds. And on delay till repeat the same 0.33 seconds. Click OK. Now we can see our time and module block. Select it and click on the terminator. We want the result or action to be a high output. So click output, scroll to output number three, and click OK. Now we have our second instruction. On feed stop, I want the light to turn on when active, only for two seconds. So again, go to add, but this time click on Mac variables and select the machine condition, the stop and click OK, select it, add, click on timer, and check accumulative, enter two seconds on pulse time, leave single shot checked, click OK, select the module, terminator, outputs, output number four, OK. Now we have the stop LED command. Our next signal is a jog on or off command. It's a little different since we want the steady light went on and the blinking light went off. So how would we do this? Click add, go to LEDs, scroll down to 83, jog on signal, click OK. So now the signal is on and we want it to make a flash when it's off. So let's turn it off. How? Select it, click add, select the invert radio button. Okay, now we just turn it off. But we want it to make it blink. So select it, add, click on timer, and check accumulative and single shot. Enter 0.33 on pulse time and delay till repeat as well. Click OK. Now we have the blinking part done. Just like we did with the feed hole. When the LED signal is on, this operation will turn it off. Therefore, it won't blink. But wait, this instruction is a two-part instruction. So without selecting anything, click Add, LEDs again. Scroll down to the list again. You can select 83, jog on use LED number, enter 83, and click OK, just to make it look different. It's actually the same thing. So this LED signal, when it's on, we will want it on. So select it, add, no operation, 
OK. Now we can select both of them. Click on the Add button. Now we have a dual input globe, which we can apply logic operations to it. So either one of these signals is steady on or flashing, we will pass through the signal to an output. So select the OR box, click Add, Terminate, Outputs, scroll and select Output 5, click OK. OK, for the Feed Override Reset LED, I want it to be flashing effective. So go to Add, LEDs, scroll down to number 17, feed override on, click OK, select the box, add, timer, uncheck accumulative and single shot, enter 0.33 on pulse time and 0.33 on delay till repeat. Click OK. Now it will blink when on. Select the box, Terminator, to Outputs, select number 6. OK, done. Now, for the e-stop reset LED, we have two different input signals. The virtual LED itself, but also the e-stop button that is hardwired to the machine. So we're dealing with two inputs and two totally different behaviors, but both of them do the same thing. And this was the situation that did not allow me to do this without the addition of external hardware to accomplish the desired result. Let me first write the brain part of it. Click on the Add, go to Inputs, select E-Stop, click OK. This is our E-Stop signal coming from the real button. Select it, add, no operation, click OK, select again, add, invert signal, select again, terminate, outputs, output number 7, click OK, that's all we need. With the E button press, we have a high signal. We flipped it, now it's low. Immediately, Mach 3 shuts down all output signals down. All LEDs turn off. The screen reset LED starts to flash when an external stop is requested, either by the e-stop switch or a limit switch. So if you try to reset it, it won't do it unless the e-stop switch is restored. Once it's restored, the brain turns it on again, but the screen button will flash until activation is performed by clicking on it. All of this is done internally by Mach 3, same as if you did not have a brain. So basically the brain is done. Now we have to resolve the turn on the real LED and the blinking action on our next part. Now let me show you the e-stop brain. Works great on the computer. The PLC works flawlessly. The problem that I had is that when I try to activate the LED through port 7 and it's a sign pin on the breakout board, it did not work. And I think the reason must be once the e-stop condition occurs, Mac 3 shuts all outputs down as the menu indicates on this part. Stop button should stop all activity in the machine as quickly as is safely possible without relying on software. So it would be great to wire output 7, in this case output 1, directly to the port and assign pin. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it. So to work around the problem, I inverted the signal and implemented a simple on-off instruction through output 7. Here's the brain that we just created. To activate it on the program, go to Operator, Brain Control. As you can see, we have enabled blinking buttons brain. Clicking on View Brain will bring up the window as it is here. Now let's observe this brain in action. I have loaded some G-code here. First, you can see that a couple of instructions here are green. 
that would be jog on and it stop. When the outputs are green, it means it's high or about 5 volts at the port. The red outputs are low or 0 volts. So now the system is in a normal condition. So in this case, the jack button is illuminated and the e-stop output has 5 volts. Now if we click on the cycle start, output number 2 becomes high and turns the LED on. When I click on hold, output number 4 turns on for 2 seconds and then turns off. That is the feed stop LED. At the same time, feed hold becomes high with the flashing action due to the 0.33 second timer flashing the feed hold LED. If I resume the feed, it will stop flashing and the output number 2 becomes high again. If I click on the stop button, again output number 2 becomes low, output number 4 becomes high for 2 seconds, and then it goes low. If I click on the jog button, the first line of the instruction becomes high, making the timer flash the LED. If I click on it again, the second line becomes high and steady on. The last button or instruction is the feed override LED. Clicking on either override button will make it high, activating the timer and making it flash. Clicking on the reset button will become low again. Finally, if I click on the reset, the brain is not taken into account, but the machine goes into an emergency condition where Mach 3 shuts all outputs off, then the external inverter and the timer take over making the e-stop LED flash approximately every 0.33 seconds. As you can see, clicking on the virtual button does not affect the brain at all. Now to see the brain part in action, let me show you the actual panel when I press the e-stop on. Watch output number 7 going from high to low. Clearly, it will not reset unless you restore the button. The thing to be aware of here is the flashing external LED along with the virtual LED. They appear to be in synchrony, but actually they are independent from each other. I will demonstrate the actual control panel at the end, so please bear with me for the next part. Designing, building, and integrating the hardware. I put together this inverter circuit using a transistor together with the timing circuit using a 555 timer. First, I used the breadboard to just make sure it would work okay. Then to the real breadboard and finally I used ECEDA to design the PCB. First the schematic, then the traces on the board. Then I aged the PCB and painted it blue just to make it look better. I found a very easy to do method for etching the PCB, so I will probably make a video about it. Eventually I connected all the buttons to the iPad 2 and one thing that I had to do is change the resistors on the arcade buttons so the LEDs would work with 5 volts. They usually come wired for 12 volts. So how does it work? Well to begin with, output number 7 is high all the time on a normal condition. So output number 7 is feeding about 3 to 5 volts to the transistor gate making the timer pin number 8 or VCC go to ground so the timer is off. Whenever there's an e-stop condition the transistor gate will go low making the VCC high to the timer making a flash. Now the flashing frequency or interval will depend on C1 which is 1 microfarad, R1 which is 1 kilo ohm and R2 which is 85 kilo ohm, those values will give me approximately 0.33 second intervals. So the circuit is very simple but it works for all intents and purposes. I know there's a more correct way to do this but I just wanted something very simple just to prove the point on the e-stop problem. Very well so I'm gonna do the uh test right here real quick about uh, the brain control. So let me first restore this window. There you go. Now we can see the brain and 
a fraction of the screen on Mac 3 there. So I can demonstrate here uh, what happens when we're activating the different buttons. So let me start. I already have some G code loaded in it. So we can proceed to activate the buttons. Uh, I'm going to start by using the cycle start, which will be the first run instruction right on the brain. If I press on the button, then you can see that a light screen and the button is illuminated. Of course, the jog is on all the time when it's uh, active, right? So we can hold the feed right now with this button. So please stop it and then it blinks and you can see the brain here in action that is like flashing. Uh, now if I proceed with the cycle then it goes back and then I can go ahead and uh, uh, turn it off or stop it completely. So you can see that turns on for a couple of seconds and then turns off. Now if I don't want to jack the machine if I turn it off right here I cannot jog and it's telling me that it's not active right so then all I have to do is just press on it again if I want to increase the feed I press on that one and it'll flash so to reset it I just if there's emergency stop condition then I press on or push on the button and it'll well, start flashing of course, you cannot reset it until you restore the switch, not either from here or from here. Now, all the other buttons automatically turn off because the, the ports will, you know, turn off. So all the outputs will turn off. So uh, now I can restore it. And now you can reset it, right? So once you reset it, then everything turns back on. Now let me uh, go ahead and uh, make the screen big right here on Mac 3. So in this case, I do have a touch screen, so I can actually act activate the buttons right here from the touch screen, but you know, it's, so you can see it illuminated. So right now it's gonna stop by itself at the end of the cycle, and you can see that it turns the red light on. So if I start the cycle again, uh, you know, and I can hold it, right here from the, from the screen. You know, the action on the button is still the same, or stop it. So, okay, so now this is the jogging action. So now you can see there is no movement on the, the arrow until I push it on, and now I can move or jog the DROs, right, or the machine. In this case, I don't have a machine hooked up, so I have to just demonstrate it with the, with the DRO. Anyway, uh, that's what the dragon uh, action will be. See no movement until you push it on. Now, the feed rate, you know, you can reset it right here. You can still see the action on the button. So, this is uh, what it does. Uh, right now, I just have that part hooked up. Once I hook it up to a machine, then I activate the power buttons and the, uh, the controller indicator right here that is on. So, this is it. As you can see, it is possible to make the buttons illuminate, providing that you write a brain for your applications or whatever function you're trying to implement on your machine. The good thing about running a brain is that it will run in the background. All you got to do is go to configure, save settings, and then go to view, save current configuration. And the next time you start Mac 3, the brain will automatically be loaded into the program. I don't know if there's any better way to do this without using any external hardware. If you do, please let me know in the comments. Alright, this is going to be all for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.